All right, back on the tank. We got Mike from MJ Signcraft, yeah. And he's actually gonna paint some of our logos on the side. So we figured we'd put this on this channel because um, not too many people paint their off-road farm equipment. But uh, Mike, welcome to the shop. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so where are you from? From Ridgeway, Ontario. Right on. So you do this for a living? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I've had my own shop 34 years this year. Nice. But I've been about 40 years in the industry doing stuff. So nice. I'm excited. Yeah. Here we go. episode you've seen us take care of a bunch of stuff on the Sherman part itself. Put new engine in it, transmission, made hydraulics on it, may go up and down, new seats, new controls. This is this is Bigfoot competition here, isn't it? It is. This is a poster paint, so it's a dead flat. All right, we're gonna let that paint dry for a little bit so that we can uh, stress it some more, and then we'll uh, enhance it a little bit to make it look like it's aged even more. All right, uh, yeah, we, we got together the other day to come up with a game plan to figure out what we wanted to put on there. And so in the meantime, I've made some patterns up. Uh, these are paper patterns. You can see the, uh, the graphics drawn on there very lightly. But what we've done with this now, we've taken what's called a pounce wheel, which is this pointy little wheel here. And we've drawn over that to trace that. And you may be able to see through, it's perforated. And so what that's going to do is uh, it's going to enable us to transfer this image onto here using some chalk because there's no silicone in it. You wouldn't want to use like a baby powder or anything like that because it would contaminate the paint and cause a fish eye. So now we're, we're going to uh, attach the pattern here to uh, the tailgate. Um, this one here is a curved lettering. There's no real straight lines to it. We want to have a bit of an arch, so we're going to more or less eyeball that into the space we have here. The other one is a uh, more straightforward text. So what we'll do is uh, we'll try and get a measurement off here to level it. We got the paint line here I'm gonna use as a reference. So that gets us squared up. This is called a pounce pad, P-O-U-N-C-E. And essentially what it is, it's a piece of cloth that holds chalk in there. And then we can take that. And then we'll just transfer the image using this chalk here, putting some on there, make sure we got enough. And then when we remove this, you'll see our pattern. <laughs> For this project, we're gonna be using, it's actually a uh, uh, one shot sign painters. Uh, this is a poster paint, so it's a dead flat uh, finish to it, which is uh, kind of what we want to match what's going on here. I'm going to start out by taking uh, some white. Just transfer some over to a little paper cup here. Plus, we're going to mix it up, take the edge of the white off, make it look like it's aged, that uh, the sun has baked it a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little bit of brown here just to take the edge off of this. Uh, yeah, our brown's seen better days here. So we've just kind of muddied it up a little bit, which will uh, go a long way to uh, blend into uh, the patina and the rust on there. Just gonna add a little more white because it's a little darker than I would like. Add a touch of reducer there just to thin it out so it, it brushes better. Plus, we want a little on the thin side so that you can see the brush strokes through it so that it has a, a look of kind of being faded out. Mix that up. You can see there's a, quite a number of different brushes we've got here. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to use one that's called a flat. Um, 
because it's kind of a flat brush, a square brush, it'll work quite nice for uh, some of this lettering here. Other brushes that uh, we'll probably use, they're called quills, and they have a little bit more of a, a tapered shape to them, a um, little bit better at doing certain types of lettering. Um, so those would be probably the two brushes we'll be using today. Got to start out by cleaning the brush. You can see there's some oil in there. What we do is we oil that after we use it. Uh, that keeps any paint from drying and hardening in the ferrule, in the metal part here. And so what that'll do is keep these brushes so they last forever. Some of these brushes I've had for 35, 40 years. Um, 1540 oil or? Uh, actually, Tub 1030 is my favorite. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, any kind of oil. Uh, I mean, ideally maybe a non-detergent, but uh, uh, I've been using 1030 since way back, because all the cars use 1030 at one I point, thought, right? Like olive oil or something. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing fancy. If you need any more oil, there's lots of the Detroit. Yeah, I've got some. <laughs> Once we get our brush clean, then I'm just using some scrap cardboard. These are some old promotional stuff that we used for a car show one time. Um, and that's going to be my palette, just so we can take the paint and fill the brush on and palette it on there. Now, another tool we use quite often is something like this called a mall stick, M-A-H-L. Um, and this just allows us to rest our hand on it so we don't get into the wet paint and stuff. So we load our paint with brush and then we pallet it onto the surface here just to evenly distribute the paint through there. And we can kind of control, wipe a little off so we don't have too much. And then using the stick here just to support the hand, we're gonna come in and uh, start to apply the lettering here. particular letter style is what would be referred to as a casual script. Um, back in the ancient days before computers when things were hand painted, uh, most sign painters had a few of these in their sort of uh, toolkit that they would pull out and it was just a, a really quick style of lettering that they could put down the lettering with. rust here, what I'm going to do is after I paint it on, I'm going to take some paper towel and just lay it on there to kind of absorb a little bit of paint so that it looks like the rust is coming through. color for here just to give it an accent and drop shadow. That one is skinned over from sitting for a while so we're gonna get through the skin there. All right I'm just gonna take this over to the truck and just kind of have a look at. Yeah it's a little bright so we're gonna kill that with some black. Now we don't want to get it too dark um, so I'm gonna Add a little of our white in there just to uh, it'll bring it gray it up a bit. And I think that's going to be perfect. that paint dry for a little bit so that we can uh, distress it some more and then we'll uh, enhance it a little bit to make it look like it's aged even more. Okay, for this pattern here, because there's a lot more detail, um, we're going to go with a different approach to transfer it. We're going to use something called Sorrel paper. 
It's a transfer paper, uh, kind of like a carbon paper, uh, except it's a wax-free again, so we don't get any contamination of fish eyes, which is really important on a fine finish like this, obviously. Um, so essentially what happens, we put that in behind, and when you trace it, it transfers with a nice white image. So that's what we're gonna do at this point here. There that are missing. This is called a Stabilo pencil and again it's a, a wax and silicone free uh, pencil that's designed for the sign industry so you can draw on there and it won't mess with your paint at all. Computer technology has been around since I started in 89 at my own shop and that's the reason I jumped in was I, I seen the potential of the, the computer stuff to you know be profitable make money because you can see the, how labor-intensive time-wise right. if you had to make a living doing science today you'd never do it because 15 years or more ago I did a job for a guy uh, a letter this truck up put Seaway Fudge Company on the doors you know and some gold letter and he says what I owe you Mike and I said well I said, you know, we get a hundred and a half for pair of doors, right? He's like, holy crap! And I'm thinking, oh, here we go, right? And I said, well, what's the problem? He goes, he said, I had my truck lettered in 1972. I paid 150 bucks in 1972. He said, here we are 25, almost 30 years later, and you're still charging the same thing. So we're mixing up some paint. This is a one-shot paint company again, but this is an enamel, the sign paint essentially. Uh, it's a gloss on like the other one, which is a flat. The um, main reason we're mixing a little of this up is just because we're going over the, uh, the aluminum trim on the side of the door, and the other stuff may not adhere. Aluminum is really difficult to get paint to stick to, so this'll stick a little better for us. So that's why we're going with this stuff. Magic eraser, you buy at your local apartment store. A little bit of water just to sand through it lightly a little bit. As you're sanding it through, you can see the thin spots wear through quicker. And it looks like the sun has faded the paint. Normally when it's hand painted, you get thick and thin uh, buildup of the paint depending on the brush stroke. And so when you look at an old truck, the old faded lettering jobs, you'll see that emphasized. So that's basically what we're trying to do here. Is just make some distinguishing between the different strokes of the lettering on the brush. 
Okay, so when you want to make paint that looks like rust, use orange and black in combination. And that will give you a brown shade. Uh, I need the black really killed it there. We're gonna have to add some orange to it. To get that right reddish tone. All right, that's pretty good there. It's, uh, and you'll see when we spray this, I'm gonna spray it in the airbrush. It's gonna give you a really authentic looking rust. So a little trick that I like to do is you take your uh, airbrush bottle, put the lid on, don't use the bottle, just use a paper Dixie cup that I can throw out later and spray right out of that. And that works really good. A little bit of the, the rust bleed through on the rust spots there. So it looks like it's coming through. Gonna touch it just right Pull you up to outer space But the valley is good day Red guitar, purple haze Stick love in the fall with all you need I like to sing the back, mama Sing the back Thank you very much. That, that looks fantastic. And it's nice that, you know, we can make it our track. Like, yep. we did a lot of work to it. I feel like we can, it's okay to put our name on it now. I really yep. appreciate all your work, man. Yeah, hey, no problem. Yeah. And how do people get a hold of you again? Uh, well, the easiest is probably to get my information from our website, mjsigncraft.com. Okay. Everything's there, so that's the easiest way. All right, so you might notice that there's an engine under the hood and there's more stuff to undo it just in the artwork. Uh, that will be coming out on DGHD real soon. Again, we're building all the off-road heavy-duty stuff on our DGHD, our heavy-duty channel. We just uh, figured we'd put this on this channel because not too many people are going to be hand-painting their off-road equipment. So uh, we really appreciate Mike's work. He's coming back to do more work on the C10, which is not dead. You guys have been asking a lot about the C10. Uh, the F350 is coming along. As soon as that is running or going down the road, the C10's coming in, getting a bunch of work done. As soon as this is done, we'll be driving it, and that will be on this channel again. So all the driving stuff will be on this channel. All the building of the heavy-duty stuff is on the other channel. I hope that's not too confusing. It helps uh, keep people's expectations of what, on, what is on what channel more organized for us and sponsors and you guys. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, we really appreciate talent like this. It's kind of a lost art, and we're glad to document some of this so you guys can try and take that on uh, at home as well. Because, um, yeah, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.